Hi, I'm Chad Jordan, and I'm the undergraduate coordinator for plant biology. What I'm going to do today is talk about the plant biology major and the minor, and I'm going to get into a little bit about the plant biology curriculum as well as some of the co-curricular opportunities that exist within the major. So plant biology itself is a very broad discipline. Um, it ranges from molecules to ecosystems. And one of the things about that is that students can really choose what they want to specialize in within the major. And because of that, the major has a lot of flexibility. And that's one of the things we're very proud of in the program. So flexibility being what that is, that means that students are able to choose the plant biology electives they take in addition to a number of other restricted elective options that are structured within the major. One of the things that is also a hallmark of our program is that we're not very large. So there are many large majors on this campus, and they're all really great. But one of the things about plant biology being small is that students get personal attention. Um, for example, I am the only advisor in addition to being the coordinator. So students interact with me, and I get to know who they are and what their interests are, and then we can use that interest and that personal attention to give them an experience that is tailored to those interests. Um, one of the things that often goes undernoticed about plant biology um, is that it's a good major for preparing students for the health professions. So students in plant biology who are, or who have been plant biology majors um, have been pre-dentistry, uh, pre-pharmacy, um, pre-human medicine. Um, so it's actually a really good major for that reason. You take all of the same physical science courses that you would need to take as prerequisites for any of these professional programs. Um, but one of the things that you're also able to do is because of the flexibility, you can take courses that um, are in, let's say, human anatomy and physiology because you have the restricted elective hours to do that. Plant biology being flexible, um, the curriculum is also is by very, its very nature set up like that. And what I have on the screen here is sort of a general layout um, of how the curriculum is structured. This information is also available on our departmental website. So all students who come into plant biology, no matter what their interests are, take general plant biology. This is PB250. The prerequisites for PB250 are Bio 181 and 183. Um, and after taking PB250, or even in some cases before, or while taking PB250, students can start to take courses in any number of different specialty areas within the major. While there is a lot of flexibility, there's also various areas that students typically tend to focus more on, um, depending on their interest. So those three areas are plant systematics and ecology. There's also um, a concentration in, or at least a focal area, in plant biotechnology. And then um, ethnobotany, and ethnobotany is all of the dynamic relations between, or relationships between plants and people. And what I have up here um, listed are some of the courses, in other words, elective courses that our students take in each one of those um, focal or um, uh, concentration areas. Um, and the, one, the courses with asterisks by them um, have laboratory components or field components to them, or they are lab or field courses. There's a big emphasis in our program on hands-on experience and coursework, and that's something that um, we really stress to our students. So instead of reading the whole list of those um, courses to you, um, I invite you to see what the courses are, um, check out the catalog, and read some of the descriptions. And as always, if you ever have questions, you can ask an advisor about them. Um, what I have listed, uh, other than these three areas here, um, are general coursework that um, any life science student is going to um, want to have and needs to have in their repertoire. Um, so general biology, so bio 181 and 183, calculus through the first level, um, general chemistry and organic chemistry at least through the first level. Um, the requirement is one semester of organic chemistry, though it's, we encourage students to take multiple semesters. Also one semester of physics, though taking multiple semesters of physics is also an option. And of course, everyone in the life sciences has genetics 311. So these are foundational courses you'll see across life science disciplines, um, but it's also very important to know that you can take more than what the minimum requirements are um, if you are doing that for some sort of pre-professional or graduate school preparation. Um, one of the things that is a big hallmark in our program um, is research. So one of the things that if you haven't already heard in your first year, you should think about already is getting research experience. 
So in our program, it's an absolute requirement that everyone get research experience before they graduate. Um, a lot of students don't leave this until the last two years. They get started in their first year or in their second year, um, and they continue with research opportunities um, throughout their undergraduate career. And what that does is it really helps make them more competitive for postgraduate opportunities. So one of the things you should be asking your LSFI advisor about, um, as well as any advisor that you go into a major um, with, um, you should be asking them about getting research experience um, within that major. And one of the things about plant biology is that your research doesn't necessarily have to be specifically within plant biology. It needs to be in a plant science discipline or a plant science area or connected to the plant sciences in some form or fashion. Now in the red box at the bottom um, is that flexibility, additional flexibility I was talking about before. There are 26 hours of restricted electives. So that's the additional math and science coursework that you would take in addition to those that are absolutely required. Um, and then the four, there are 14 hours of free electives um, to make up that balance. And the free electives essentially are anything that you want to take as long as you don't go backwards in a discipline. Um, what a lot of our students find is they use those free electives to take a courses in another language, for example. Or if they want to take even more science than what the curriculum prescribes, they will use free electives to take or fill in um, some of those, um, use, take some of that coursework and make up those free elective hours there. So because of the flexibility, one of the things that um, is often asked is, can I double major in plant biology? Um, and the answer is yes. Um, and with double majors, I've list, given you a list here of some of the most common double majors. So biochemistry and horticultural science, which is a bit different than plant biology. Um, and of course, genetics is another one for students who are interested in plant biotechnology and molecular and cellular biology, as well as environmental sciences. So if you're thinking about one of these majors, but you're still interested in plants, um, of course, it's possible to do that with the right uh, level of planning. So thinking about that earlier is actually a beneficial, a beneficial thing. Now, if you think you want to get some coursework that allows you to um, focus a little bit in the plant sciences, but maybe a double major is not, you don't think is the right thing for you, then a plant biology minor is always an option. So the requirements are that Anyone who's interested in the minor take PB200, which is non-majors plant biology, or PB250, as I mentioned before, and then 11 hours of coursework um, that are in the elective categories. And those can be from any level um, and be lab or non-lab courses depending on the student's interest. As I mentioned before, getting involved in research is one of the most important things that you can do. Um, and here at NC State, we have the benefit of having probably the most plant scientists here in the southeast. Um, and these range from cell molecular uh, plant scientists whose work primarily goes on in labs um, to those who operate primarily in the field, particularly ecological research, for example. Um, so no matter what your interest might be in the plant sciences, for getting research experience, there's probably someone here they can connect you with someone um, who may be able to um, talk with you about getting research experience. If you are interested in getting research early, which I hope you are, um, then there are a few things that you may um, think about doing. Number one, um, and this is one of the most common things I tell my own majors after they've come, come into plant biology, is to start using the web to your advantage. So look through faculty members' websites, see some of the research that they're doing. You don't have to read all their papers and be an expert on everything that they're doing, but if something is grabbing your attention or your interest, it's good to make note of that um, and to kind of keep a running list of those faculty members you may be interested in working with. Um, for students who are interested in doing research in plant biology, um, I recommend that you meet with me and we talk about what those interests are. Maybe I can help identify um, a few more faculty members who may be of interest to you. Um, the next step is generate a prioritized contact list um, and then simply contact the faculty members. If they're on campus, you can drop by or just simply send them an email and schedule an appointment to meet with them. One of the things that you should know is that faculty members expect students to contact them about undergraduate research. Um, so I encourage you not to be afraid to contact them um, and send them an email and say, um, can I meet with you about getting some research experience. Now, some of our students also go off campus um, for research. So by and large, most students here at NC State, their research ex experience is with a faculty member. But there are a number of programs that students can augment that on-campus experience with 
off campus. Um, so one of the things that I'll, I'll point out to you um, is that students can participate, especially after the sophomore or junior year, in a program called Research Experience for Undergraduates, or REUs for short. Um, and those are programs that are sponsored by the National Science Foundation at institutions all throughout the United States in different scientific areas. Um, if you're interested in that, I encourage you to talk with whoever your advisor is so they can point you in the right direction for knowing what the REUs, the REUs are um, and so that you can think about applying for them. Applications are typically due in the spring, um, and these are summer 10-week experiences that usually come with a summer stipend. Um, we've also had some students that to go to uh, not-for-profit organizations um, who do scientific research. So the Noble Foundation in Ardmore, Oklahoma, um, as well as the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center in St. Louis, Missouri. These are competitive, highly competitive um, internships to get, but they also provide students with that cutting edge um, research exposure and experience. Now we do have a small number of students who do industry internships. So one of the advantages of being here in Raleigh is that Research Triangle Park is really close by. So if you are interested in working with, let's say, one of the plant biotech companies, for example, um, they are close by and their major, a major biotechnology hub is not 20 minutes away from campus. We have had students who have done um, summer work um, and sometimes in semester work or a co-op experience um, with Bear Crop Science um, and with BASF Plant Sciences as well. So if you're interested in those things, of course, talk with um, an advisor about, getting, about finding out more information about that. Um, now, one of the things that I hope every one of you is thinking about is if I do research experience, how do I let the scientific community know about my work? One of your goals as an undergraduate should be, at least in the scientific disciplines, to present your work before you graduate, um, either at a university symposium, and we have symposia here at NC State every summer and every spring, or at a statewide symposium, which is held every fall at one institution or another throughout the state of North Carolina. Um, and about 40% of our students do that. Um, so um, one, of their, one of the things that they do is they present a poster, um, or we've had students publish an app before with a student, or with a, with a faculty member, um, or you know, the gold standard really is to get your name alongside a faculty member in a publication. One of the questions I often get as a coordinator is, can I do study abroad? Um, and no matter what your major is, the answer that you should be thinking is yes. Um, so I would encourage you to think strongly about doing study abroad. Really with study abroad, it's all about planning. So you don't necessarily need to know in your first year exactly where you wanna go or how long you wanna be there, but you, you should think about um, what area of the world you might like to go study abroad in, um, and of course the timing. Timing is everything. So you don't want to put study abroad off until your very last semester at the university. Study abroad typically takes place um, in the sophomore or the junior years. Um, in, I encourage students in plant biology to simply, we sit down if they say, I want to do study abroad, we map out perhaps the, the correct semester or what would be perhaps the best semester for them to do their study abroad experience. Um, our department does have a study abroad program. Um, there's one of them, um, and that's to China, and that runs every other um, year in the odd years. And that's a three to four week experience um, exploring the plant resources and ecology of eastern China. Um, so um, I'm filming this in 2017, which means that, of course, this summer that program will run, and we have a group of students going to China this summer. Um, but plant biology majors aren't restricted to participating in one of our departmental programs. Um, we've had students do programmatic study abroads, which are typically summer or perhaps over spring break, um, in a number of different countries with different NC State faculty members, and they earn course credit. Of course, the other type of study abroad is just to simply go abroad um, for a semester. In some cases, we've had students spend a whole year. Um, and in that particular case, it's really thinking about the institution, the location, and the courses that you can take there at that institution that perhaps you couldn't take anywhere else, or at least you couldn't take here at NC State. Of course, you want to think about courses that will transfer back, and that's why meeting with an advisor to develop a plan for study abroad is one of the best things you can do if you're interested in it. So what I have up here is a list of some of the countries that plant biology majors um, have studied in. And some of these have been summer programs, but by and large, um, they are semester-long programs, so all over the world. 
So if you are interested in the plant biology major, I have a list of things that you really need to do and then some of the things that I suggest that you do. Um, so one of the things that you must do is perform well on your biology, introductory biology courses, um, as well as introductory chemistry. Of course, your cumulative GPA needs to be 2.0, but of course we would like students to have GPAs that are higher than that, um, and they demonstrate outstanding performance in those introductory courses. One of the things that we know is that chemistry and biology are foundations for what is to come in future semesters. So having good, strong foundation in those areas is really essential for doing well in the upper level courses, really in any plant science discipline. One of the things um, you need to be interested in is plants. So um, if you're gonna take plant biology courses, you need to be interested in plants. So everyone has a different reason for working on plants. I got in, interested in plants because I was very interested in the way they grow and develop. Um, people have lots of backgrounds, different experiences with plants. So um, whatever that is, you need to be interested in it from an academic perspective. Um, if you think, well, I wanna go into maybe um, dental school, um, is plant biology a right major for me? Well, if you're interested in plants, great. And you can take all the prerequisite coursework you need, for example, for dental school. Um, in addition, I will tell you it's sort of an outside the box major choice um, for students who are thinking about going on to uh, professional programs in the health sciences. The other thing, of course, as I mentioned before, is you need to want to do research. So um, my advisees tell me sometimes that they think my middle name is research. So, um, because I talk about it every time we meet. So um, we wanna make sure that students are getting the research experience because what that demonstrates is what you can do. Learning something in the classroom is one thing, but being able to see how real science is conducted in laboratories or out in the field is quite another. So you need to have that practical experience and pick up the skills that employers and graduate program directors are going to be looking for when you apply for those sorts of positions or programs. Now, one of the things I would encourage you to do if you're interested in plant biology is meet with me. So, um, and I, my office is in Gardner Hall, so I'm not that far away. Um, but if you are interested in the plant biology major, it's one of the things that I suggest. Um, and if you um, wanna know what plants are about, then take a plant biology course. Um, not every course has plant biology 250 as a prerequisite. So there are some plant biology courses that have no prerequisites that are part of the general education program. So you may wanna check out one of those courses if you're trying to think about uh, plant biology as a major or potentially a minor. And just real quickly, um, what are graduates do? This is often a question I get from uh, prospective students who are thinking about NC State and of course students who are already here. So um, plant biologists are employed by a lots of different types of organizations. Um, I will say that about 60%, so the majority of our students within one year have been admitted to some graduate or professional program, whether it's in the plant sciences, the applied plant sciences, for example, like plant pathology or crop science or forestry, um, or um, they're in medical school or dental school, um, or even law school in some instances. Um, some of our students, of course, because RTP is close by, especially if they've established connections with RTP, um, they seek positions in Research Triangle Park in one of the companies that are over there. So they are a popular employer, especially for students who are interested in cell and molecular biology. For students who are interested in ecology and biodiversity and conservation work, often they go on to seek um, internships at not-for-profit or, um, or with federal agencies. Um, and of course, on the ecological side, um, there are consulting firms that will hire uh, plant scientists who know the flora and know the regulations as, in particular about flora and know how to identify plants in the landscape. So in closing, if you ever have any questions at any time, um, don't hesitate to contact me. This is my contact information and you can visit our website at pmb.cals.ncsu.edu. Thank you.